What's going on guys? How you doing? We're on part four of this interview with Chris Shiflett and Alex Lifeson. I feel like they're about to get into this solo right here, this limelight solo. They're talking about gear, they're talking about different things, talking about some kind of specifics of the setup of this session, this this recording. So I feel like they're about to get into the playing aspect of it, which uh, you know, will be interesting to see, to check out. The other reason why you're here is for this giveaway. The Alex Lifeson Henter Sportscaster Figurine. Wow. Look at that. Okay. Just like the one that I have. Wow. I have two of these to give away, thanks to Dave. And if you want one, you need to email me at jpanreadsemail at gmail.com. In the subject, put blah, blah, blah. In the email, send me your name and your email address. One submission per person. I'm announcing on the 24th at 8.30 a.m. Make sure you get your submission in. It should be in already. I know how it went last time. There's, I, I couldn't believe how late I was getting submissions. I was just like, it was to the point where I was like, I already submitted. I already announced. Like, the announcement was already made. I was still getting submissions. I was just like... <laughs> Like, yo, what are you doing? Anyways, yes, so that's what you gotta do. All right, let's get into uh, this part four of this interview. This, you know, they're talking about cool stuff. They're talking about specific stuff, talking about gear, talking about guitar player stuff. Anyways, let's get into part four. Bam. Alex, are you ready to break this thing down nice and slow so we can follow along? All right, we're okay, we're, I'll we're, try. We're getting all right. We're at so, it's not easy to play slow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah. But it gets easier every year. Uh, so let's just it's first do a little joke. housekeeping. So the solo section fell of Limelight face. is in G sharp minor. Um, let, can we talk about before we even get into the into the solo itself? Can we just talk about the chords in the song? Because I feel like these this is like a signature thing of yours. Um, some of these like uh, chords in strange shapes with drone notes ringing out. Yeah. One of these in particular, I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do. Okay, so there's like these kind of things where you're doing like a bar chord, but you're letting the high E and the, and the B ring out. But it's that G sharp, like what are we even calling this? G sharp minor sub yeah, I don't chord know what thing that you've... Been. Like, where does that stuff come from? How did you come up with that? Were there other players that you had listened to before that, that influenced that? Or were you just, did you come up with that on your own? I don't know. I, I, I'm always looking for something different. And uh, I would just try different chords, different positions, and, and see what came up. Um, and that was, that was one of those. I mean, that, that's, a, that's kind of an Andy Summers chord. Or, you know, it's, the thing that I love about those kind of chords is to like the casual, casual listener. It just sounds like a song. But when you dive into it and start to try to figure it out, you realize, wait, I'm not doing that right. And then you have to like look into the granular stuff and you realize, oh, wait, there's a lot more going on there than than you just pick up on initially. I mean, this is a nine. Yeah. Uh, is that sort of the goal when you're writing totally. stuff? To yeah. Get, uh, to make it sound simple, but it's it's actually more complicated. And when you sit down to try to learn it, you realize that oh, it's not what I or, thought it or was. A six. And for me, having all those open strings in a lot of my chords, uh, not only created more sound to fill in the gaps. It's color because Getty and Neil were very active, fast players. Like they were, they were so active yeah. all the time. Yeah, somebody had to hold the fort. And it sort of came to me, and, and that was fine. That's what I was I like saying. It's like he's the bass player of the band. I've said that, that before. And playing those kind of chords where they're open goes a long way. Right. And then with chorus and all of that other stuff. Yeah, even even in some of that stuff, I think it's so great where you got like you're keeping the uh, you're keeping your finger on that on the high yeah. key. That one, yeah, 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 so cool. 
this sounds great. Like that that's a great sounding chord. That's just an A chord. Right. With that added second. It adds color. You're talking about chord extensions right now. This is jazz. Oh. Yeah, it's all just color. Really nice color. Yes, which brings us perfectly right. to the beginning of the solo. <laughs> right. So when when this thing kicks in, um, so like we said, great scene change. Now it's just you're just playing against bass and drums and some keyboard pads. Mm-hmm. Um, is it, it when that first B of the solo comes in? Is that an open B string? Yes. So it's. So I just tap the the twelfth fret. Okay, I was wondering with that when when that when that harmonic comes in, if that was like a happy accident in the studio, um, or if that was like an intentional thing. You're not picking it; you're just tapping it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it bends, and that comes back up. And where is that? That's what on the fourth fret on the D. Yeah, string? that's the F sharp, fourth fret on the D string. So this goes down. <laughs> this is so this now is those like ones you're sliding silly. into, is <laughs> that right? Silly. So you're not you're, yeah. not doing, you're not doing like <laughs> starting with the bar down. It's not that, it's And then that's a lift. Ah, and where's that? That's the, uh, see, now that's, the, when, it, when we get to that part of the solo, I think that's really interesting, because that's, the solo's in G sharp minor, but you're coming in on the flat seven and kind of hanging on it for a while, which is like a little, you know, it's a little ear twister. Yeah, it's a minor. The, it's minor, that's a note. You've got the F sharp. Going to the flat seven, minor third, flat seven octave. And then this one, when you get to that, is an inch, like, for, for if it was me, I would have probably gone, like, just a regular minor third to the four to the, to the tonic. But you go to the, to the A sharp. Which is like, that's like a, a, a somewhat unusual choice. Yeah. It has to be fragile and and borderline f- breaking down. That's how you feel. Fragile sometimes. and borderline breaking down. Yeah, that's Love the it. whole idea of being in the limelight, you know? And I wanted to f- echo that. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Now we I feel like we're rushing through we gotta yeah, slow right. this down for the for the people. All right, right, right. Slow down, slow down. All right, let's break that down really slow. So we kind of covered that first bit. But with this next part, just do that nice and slow for me. That that, that is tricky and it and it's, and it's kind of flying by. Okay, interesting. So let's let's talk about that real quick. That pattern you're doing, is that something you just came up with 
in the studio that day or was that is that like one of yep. your sort of grab bag like patterns you know we all have like you know those kind of like those kind of like patterns that we that we do in leads but that one's a little tricky and hard to kind of do up up at tempo yeah it was on the day and it was supposed to uh again just represent that feeling of not being in control and and very fragile shaky and then and then the next part the next part you do that uh you you do a, a little dive on the tonic but then um you're going to the open g string which open g in the in the context of this solo is a is a strange note but yeah but is that just like just throwing caution to the wind and you've got the you got the tremolo down it's not really hitting yeah the notes, th so. exactly it doesn't it, yeah because it's it's not really, you're not hearing that. It's like an effect. You're not hearing that note, really. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, it's like an effect. I was playing that wrong. I was going... Yeah, yeah I like that part. Yeah, you don't actually... Go down with the trauma until you actually finish the phrase. Hit the open string. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this thing on tour, man. I'm gonna do that yeah. every night. <laughs> <laughs> Now the big finale thing, it's really like by this time it's like the, the band's revving up and the solos revving up right along with it. With that first bend after that big dive, it goes yeah. you're bending up to the to the minor third. Are you doing a half step bend or a whole step bend? Is it this? Or is it Um Let's see. Okay. So that second part after the bend, and then and then you're picking that. I thought that was a. Well, I I, I play it now, picked. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so let's let's look at that that last picking part because what is that pat like? How are you fingering that? I think I know the is the pattern. Which yes, yeah. those, those kind of licks are really difficult. I I feel like because you're you know you've got it's like three three notes that are a whole step apart. And then when you shift up to the next one, it's a whole step and a half step. Like when anytime you go between those shapes, it always I always fumble it. So how how do you approach that? What is, how do you finger that? Moving between those two. Yeah, well it's that's a place common thing for me. A lot of my solos will have that. Uh, is he just really sort of dumbing it down like on purpose? Just to finish to, to resolve fine. the solo, um, and that's how I use that particular phrasing just a feeling of desperation as you're you're climbing up and sort of grabbing that last note your last word kind of thing but are your fing are you using the same fingers for those yeah for that or is it or are you changing so you you did yeah, your I would first just three fingers Awesome. <laughs> All right, there it is. I'm kind of like, like, these are just scale patterns, right? They're just scale patterns, right? I mean, all the playing is, especially like guitar and bass, is all just, I mean, any, any music is patterns, okay? Right? So, like, that's why I'm just like, you're saying that playing these scale patterns is is difficult or hard? This is like intensely basic. What? 
what are you talking about? Are you doing this for, are you playing dumb at like on purpose, like for the audience or whatever? Like, I don't like, how'd you get into Foo Fighters if you can't play scale patterns like that? Like what doesn't even make sense anyways. And then they're talking about, you know, like hitting tensions. So this is theory stuff, right? This is theory stuff. And it's not, it's not like intensely difficult theory stuff. There's not that much theory, frankly. I mean, you can get crazy, but like you don't need to get crazy. You really don't. Okay, so when you have chords and how they're built, root, third, fifth, seventh, they, they move in thirds, okay? In thirds, third, a third is an interval, okay? So intervals are important. You need to un know intervals. Interval is just the space from one note to the next. So a whole step is a major second, a major third, right? And you just take a major scale, one, two, three, right? From one to two is a major two. From one to three is a major third. To four, that's a perfect four. To five is a perfect five, right? These are types. Then there's types of intervals, right? We just talked about major and perfect. There's also minor, diminished, okay, right? Getting augmented, right? Getting into different types of intervals. So, you know, I'm not giving you a theory lesson. This is not how I would give it to you. You know, I'm going fast, <laughs> right? Chords, right? Built in thirds. One, three, five, seven. That's your basic chord. Even a seventh for like rock music and any of that kind of thing is kind of a lot, right? Most of rock stuff is like one, three, five octave, right? But then you get into more color, right? These are the things that I like when I talk about color and nice changes and things like that. Usually they have these colors in it. Seven, nine, eleven. 13. That's it. Okay. And then it's what you do with those. So flat seven, sharp nine, sharp 11, flat 13, things like that. What does that mean? Sharp means you're raising it at half step. Flat means you're lowering it a half step. Okay. So nine is two, right? So you got one, three, five, seven from seven to nine. The ninth is just the major second up an octave. Okay? So it's just two. 11 is four. 13 is six. Okay? Those are tensions. And that's all the notes of the chord, uh, of, of the scale, all the notes, all of them. They're all right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? And you just got them all. One, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13. Okay? So. He's hitting things in these chords like he's hitting 13s and he's hitting 9s and it sounds nice because it's a tension note on on the chord. It's a nice different color. Super common. Super I mean, you know, especially that's why it's like especially in jazz, it's like it's all just right there. It's like every single freaking chord has all that shit in it, you know. But in this kind of music, it's less I mean, it's common for rush i mean i feel like i don't know i just don't feel like it's not common but I, I i guess i get it i guess i get it whatever you know i mean i went to music school okay <laughs> i'm not I'm, i don't say that to brag or any of that kind of thing it's totally not a brag by the way it's it's just not but also i just don't understand how this guy who i don't I, you know i don't know i frankly i didn't even know that foo fires had another guitar I like their music, but of course I'm always going to just see Foo Fighters and think Dave Grohl, and that's it. Basically, that's it. So anyways, I didn't even really, I knew of Taylor Hawkins, and I had actually the Kotel Riders. Yeah, so I, like I, you know, I knew of all of uh, them or whatever, but and who's their bass player? Nate? Nate Mendel? Is that his name? Nate? Anyways, and then just the scale pattern stuff, and then also like in the solo, he does that whole dive bomb thing, and he's talking about, well, wait a minute, you're hitting a G on a G sharp. Okay, which is like the major, which is the major seven, even though he's talking as if it's it's minor, it's supposed to be minor. And but how he's doing it, he's just doing it as an effect, right, which there are those things and those kinds of things make solos and make parts interesting, 
because it's not just notes it's also like there's also like you know we're talking about sound here sound effects right matters i mean you can play any note over anything that you want it doesn't matter if theoretically it's correct or not it matters how you how you use it so that would be things like how you approach the note and also how you leave the note right all those things kind of matter yeah anyways super basic lesson <laughs> it's not really a lesson anyways because yeah all this kind of stuff and it just the 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 I, I still am just like the scale stuff I'm like and maybe he's just doing that just because I, I don't know I don't know why he's doing that I don't do things like how other people do it or some people I don't know and I feel like sometimes it comes off as pretentious and I'm sorry I don't mean it that way I just don't understand I'm like there's no way you don't know this like how do you not know just uh, like own what you know right like I, I don't know whatever anyways still really cool still cool stuff I really like that dive bomb, bomb part. That's that's a cool part of the solo. Just like hearing it right here, that's the part that gets the reaction out of me. It's because it's it because it's that sound effect, that that note, that thing that doesn't belong kind of sonically in a way, but yet it's it does and it's really cool. Yeah, it's just a cool part. Anyways, the giveaway. If you want to receive one of two Hunter Sportscasters, thanks to Dave, you need to submit. How do you submit? You need to email me at jpanreadsemail at gmail.com. In the subject, write blah, blah, blah. In the body, send me your name and your email address. One submission per person. You got to do it if you haven't. Thank you, guys. I'm announcing on the 24th, 8.30 a.m. video. I'll catch you guys in the next video.